Well, from gold in Western Australia to gold in WA and Queensland. Next up, we have Peter Bird. He is the chairman of Zenith Minerals ASX. Code is ZNC. I think that's right, isn't it, Peter? ZNC? Uh, that's correct, Kerry, and thank you so much for having me at your conference. Well, over to you to tell us about what's going on with Zenith. Lots of, lots of news flow coming out recently. Yes, plenty of news flow and uh, thanks for everyone to tune in. Uh, what I'm going to do today is just spend a few minutes talking you through the Zenith story with a focus particularly on the Queensland and Western Australian projects. Uh, what you have in front of you is uh, our presentation, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, there's the necessary disclaimer, which I'll, uh, I'm sure everyone will have a chance to read. So why Zenith? Obviously, our strategy is very much focused on precious and base metals. Um, we're very active, totally within Australia. We have three gold and one copper project very active, and we're drilling three right now. Uh, all tier one regions, and really the technical strategy is to focus on large scale deposits capable of making a significant impact on the, the company and, and of course its value. Um, just for those who are not familiar with the story, uh, we do have sufficient uh, cash in the bank now to continue to evaluate these projects over the next uh, series of months. Quick snapshot of the company, um, about 300 million shares on issue, market cap circa 37 to $40 million. Uh, very solid uh, register who have been very loyal and as I mentioned earlier, sufficient, sufficient cash to move, move through our projects. Let's just talk about our projects. So what I'm gonna to do today is talk about predominantly our project in Queensland, which is Red Mountain, and our project in WA Split Rocks, but I'll also just have a couple of comments about one of the juniors in the stable, Jack Adjury, and uh, just round up with a touching on our copper project also in Queensland. Moving to Queensland, so where are we in Queensland? Um, for those of you not familiar, you can see that little square box there on the screen. Um, this is a very good address for particularly gold projects. And you can see from the north at Mount Wright, so these are all proven deposits, Mount Carlton, right down to the south to Mount Rawdon, um, very significant projects in the area. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is Red Mountain, which is just to the northeast of Krakow. Uh, that's our gold project, and Devlin Creek, which is actually our base metals project. I won't spend a lot of time on Flanagan's today, other than to say that will be advanced into the year. So, what's Red Mountain? So, Red Mountain is actually a new or virgin discovery. It was discovered in the late part of last calendar year by the Zenith team. And what you see in front of you is a plan image of the soil sampling that was done there. And on the right, uh, so I beg your pardon, on the left hand side of the breccia, you can see the highlighted sort of orange and pink stone. So we've defined uh, an anomaly that's about 1.2 kilometres in length. And once that was defined, we set about starting to drill uh, that anomaly. Uh, with some great success, and you can see uh, some of the grades there on on the uh, on the left. If we just now have a look at a vertical slice from the south, where my pointer is, um, through to the north, where my pointer is, that's about 1,200 metres. And if we jump to the next slide, what I'm going to show you on the uh, right of screen there is that vertical slice, and what we've already defined in pinky purple there is quite a, a significant zone of mineralisation that extends down to approximately 100 vertical metres. The nature of these sorts of uh, ore bodies or, or types of mineralisation is that they tend to be cigar or sausage shape in style. So you don't tend to expect a great surface expression, but what you would expect over time is a depth extension. And perhaps just to illustrate that, I'll jump to the next slide. Uh, so what the next slide is illustrating to you is this on the left hand side of the screen is the Mount Wright gold deposit that has been exploited uh, by previous operators. And you can see extends from surface down to about a thousand vertical metres. As a model or the sorts of thing we're chasing is we've overlain the initial drilling that we've undertaken at Red Mountain 
uh, over that Mount Wright deposit outline. And you can, so you can see the sorts of things that we would be trying to target. So we'll be back in here drilling shortly, and uh, I would just suggest that people keep an eye on activity level. We'll now move to Western Australia. So this part of Western Australia is a very well-known address for great gold deposits. That's the town of Southern Cross there in the upper part of the screen. Some well-known deposits, as I've said, um, Edna May, Marble Lock, Yilgarn Star, and Bounty. And then our lease holding is outlined here in the blue. Um, and we have systematically over the recent past been undertaking some soil sampling, which is the early stage exploration, and then followed that up with some air core drilling with great success. So what I'm gonna do here is just jump in on this area here where the red dot is um, to talk about what we've achieved. So without getting overly technical, we've defined 18 anomalous zones over an 18 kilometer length or, or zone. And what you can see on the screen here are four of those. So they're the top four as in the northernmost four. And the air core drilling on the Dulce laterite pit, which is this area here, has defined some absolutely wonderful results. So with that, uh, we plotted that up, which is the next image. And uh, we have defined a, an anomalous shear zone over a two kilometer length. And we know it goes down approximately 300 meters, um, but it's not closed off at this stage. And what you can see in this image, those little yellow dots or spots are uh, the early stage air core drilling that's had some really good hits. We, we now intend to get back in here and get drilling underneath these areas uh, probably later this month, which we've previously announced, uh, with, with the expectation or the hope that we can extend the mineralisation of depth. Uh, if we had to have a quick look at the uh, cross-sectional view or a slice through that shear zone, you can see those grades at the upper level and we're obviously targeting down a bit deeper. So again, pretty exciting. Watch this space and uh, we're pretty expectant that we'll have some success. Just quickly, I wanted to touch on New South Wales. Uh, this is much earlier in the stable of uh, or the portfolio, but we've also picked up this project called Jack Adjury. Um, Jack Adjury already has a pre-existing trench or costine as it's called of surface samples that extend for 160 metres at 1.2 grams per tonne. So that's pretty tantalising. Um, we would anticipate it will be in here probably Q1 of 2021 and be drilling. So with respect to the gold portfolio, clearly we've got a lot going on. We're drilling at uh, two currently, and we would hope to be drilling at this one in Q1 of the next calendar year. Just to round out the uh, portfolio, um, I mentioned at the start in Queensland, we also have a base metal project, which is the Devil Creek project. Uh, it, it already has a defined uh, copper resource of just under 2.6 million tonnes at 1.76% copper up here in the north. We control 50 kilometres of the prospective sequence or belt. Um, and for those of you not familiar with these sort of systems, which are VMS systems, they tend to occur in clusters or swarms. So we've obviously defined one and we've just completed some drilling at another one called Snook down here that's just been completed. We don't have the results yet, but uh, I think the way to think about this, if you're looking at the Zenith story, is over the next number of months, we'll be progressively evaluating this and drilling uh, to see whether or not we can prove up enough contained metal uh, to turn it into something super meaningful. But at this stage, uh, the early stages are very interesting. I think in the longer term, you know, clearly copper uh, coupled with gold is a great sort of strategic portfolio to have in, in the world we're in today. Lastly, I just want to touch very briefly, not only do we have our our wholly owned projects, we've got a number of joint venture projects uh, which are managed separately and funded separately. And I've got two examples there on the screen, uh, one in Turkey, Kabul Tepe with Tech, uh, and one with Rumble Resources in Western Australia, uh, both of which are advancing well. Uh, the Tech project is a gold project, and you can see there's some exceptional uh, drilling results there. 
and we maintained a 20% interest and a similar interest at Erahidi in the uh, base metal project with a 25% interest. So, uh, you know, they're, they're just, they just complement our wholly owned portfolio. So for, for the listeners or for the observers, you know, what can you look forward uh, for Zenith in the, in the next little while. As I said earlier, we're drilling three projects right now. We're drilling Red Mountain Gold in Queensland, which is a high gold grade gold project. We're drilling Split Rocks in Western Australia, uh, which is lower grade, but uh, larger scale. And of course, we're drilling the Devlin Creek uh, Copper Zinc project in Queensland. And then when we look into the earlier part of next calendar year, we would be hopeful to get on to Jack Adjury. So there's going to be an enormous amount of news flow uh, going forward. Um, and we're well enough funded just to progress these, these projects to the next stage. So with that, uh, I'd just like to close out by saying the following. I think uh, as a company, uh, Zenith has an excellent portfolio. Um, it's got assets both of scale and relevance. Um, we're in the gold space that's complemented by copper. Really, we've got sufficient money to go on with it and we've got the right team. I mean, led by Michael Clifford, our CEO, they're proven explorers. Um, they're great at identifying projects. And if you have a bit of a look at our recent announcements that have been made, you'll see, particularly with Split Rocks, um, Devlin Creek and Red Mountain, there are already some wonderful results coming and you know we're optimistic we can we can continue to build upon that into the early part of next calendar year. And uh, look, I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to listen. I'll now hand back to Kerry. Uh, thanks, Peter. A really good overview uh, of, of Zenith's projects. I've got a more personal question for you, Peter, not getting too personal, but you know, um, you've recently become the chairman of Zenith. I, I, I just want to know from your point of view, what attracted you to these projects? What did you see that you thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to become chairman. I really like what these guys are doing. So there's a lot of people on the conference today, some of whom have never invested in gold equities before. There's always a risk with equities, but why do you think that this is um, a strong value proposition? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I, I think um, it really gets back to, to two things. I think the, the team, the, the technical team within Zenith have really over the journey, you know, prior to Zenith and with Zenith had this innate ability to pick up what I call really great assets. And when you sort of assess, you know, just do a technical assessment of those assets, um, it's terribly unusual for a small company with a market cap of 35 to 40 million to have not just one good asset, but a whole portfolio of them. And that's what they've put together. They've put together a great portfolio over a number of years. I mean, we're hearing about them now, but these have been aggregated over a number of years. And as we all understand in the resource world, um, there's probably been a little less interest in resources uh, over the past few years, but that is now, you know, coming into the limelight. So there's that, uh, they're, they're really very good assets. And now we've got the, the funds in place to evaluate them. I think we can create enormous value for shareholders just by progressively and systematically doing the work on the ground. They're all in um, you know, great addresses. Uh, Australia is a great place to work. And the macro is, I think, without being too negative, um, we're in a bit of an uncertain world. So I think being exposed particularly to gold is a very good place to be over the next few years. Tend to agree with you on what's, you know, we are living in very interesting and volatile times. And I agree, everybody knows I'm a gold nerd. Um, Peter, have you got any uh, environmental issues at the Red Mountain project or uh, are you on track? No issues up around there. I guess it is a mining jurisdiction, isn't it? No, no, no issues at our projects. I mean, but listeners should be aware that, and this is just normal uh, fare for all companies, you, you do have to go through all of your normal flora and fauna surveys and Indigenous surveys uh, prior to any activity and do your rehabilitation, but there are no red flags on any of the projects. Peter, uh, before we wrap up, I want you to, to explain to our listeners uh, on the conference day, 
What do you think are the good reasons for people to be looking, taking a serious look at Zenith? You've flown a bit under the radar recently and you're just coming up and letting people know that you've got this great group of assets. Uh, what is the focus and what should investors, why should they be looking at Zenith right now? Yeah, I, I, I think it's really simple, which is the slide that's in front of everyone. There's the right team, a great portfolio of assets in the correct commodities and sufficient uh, capital in place now to take them up the value curve or up the value chain in a reasonably short period of time. And we're very active vis-a-vis -vis drilling at least three of these assets uh, now well into next calendar year. Peter Bird, thanks for sharing the Zenith Minerals story with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said to you before, the ASX code is ZNC, check them out. Thanks very much for joining us on the virtual cold conference and we will see you in the Zoom networking call later today. Thanks very much.